Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Type 95B1. This is a carbine, used to be in Battlefield 3 for the Engineer class. It was actually a pretty interesting weapon back then, and I simply haven't even used this gun in Battlefield 4 yet. I saw an interesting stat list a while back showing uh, the most popular and least popular guns in Battlefield, and the Type 95B1 is one of the least popular carbines in the game, and I kind of wanted to know why, because it was actually pretty interesting in Battlefield 3. It was one of the few weapons that you could attach a laser sight to and a heavy barrel at the same time, which in Battlefield 3 gave it very good hip fire and very good aim down sight accuracy and ranged uh, performance. Now the, the stats of those attachments have changed a little bit in Battlefield 4. For the most part they can do the same thing except now most weapons can actually attach a heavy barrel and laser sight. So the Type 95B one has actually lost its sort of advantage over some of the other guns in the game in that they can all do that now. Now like many weapons in Battlefield 4, the iron sights on this thing just aren't up to the task of really dominating your opponent. Fortunately, because this is a Chinese carbine, you get the coyote sight very early on. The coyote sight is one of the best uh, red dot sights in the game in my opinion. I prefer the cobra sight overall, but the coyote is a close second and it can certainly handle itself in most situations. Early on you will also unlock the laser sight at 20 kills and then the ergo grip at 30 kills. Equipping both of these attachments will further improve this weapon's already very good hip fire accuracy and this is really one of the advantages that you're going to need to really take advantage of this gun uh, in order to actually make it function well because it has a very low rate of fire which ultimately is going to hold this gun back from being a big contender on the battlefield in any way whatsoever. Now, although I do recommend the laser sight for a lot of good close quarter weaponry, the maps in Battlefield 4 rarely facilitate only close quarter engagements or close quarter combat. There's often a lot of long range areas, and in those situations, a laser sight really does pop you out from the background. It gives away your position very well. If you haven't already been spotted, then you wanna avoid being spotted at all costs. And the laser sight just really kinda separates you from the environment, from what's going on around you. It lets your enemies pinpoint you much quicker and it's just something that I've decided to try and shy away from in my general play style. So when you start unlocking some of the higher level attachments for this gun, I would recommend perhaps foregoing the laser sight and play around with some of the attachments that improve your aiming down sight accuracy since it's so poor with this weapon. So you can see on the stats here from simthick.com, it has a .375 aiming down sight accuracy, which is definitely a, a very bad default accuracy. It's gonna make hitting targets at medium and longer range very difficult. And unfortunately, if you've got a carbine that can't really handle itself at medium range, then you're in a bad situation. As again, many of the maps in Battlefield 4 really are catered to medium and longer range weaponry. So if you are just running close quarters and you really wanna run a carbine, the m -Tower is certainly better than this gun, the ACWR, there's plenty of weapons out there that actually shoot faster than this, are very good in close quarters that I would recommend over the Type 95B1. So finding a place for this weapon is difficult, I'm trying to make it more versatile in the way that I have it set up, so I ultimately ended up putting a stubby grip on here and a heavy barrel to try and help my long range accuracy as much as possible. Tap firing is a little bit difficult with this weapon depending on what your attachments are. It can be done for long range shooting, but unfortunately carbines have a 15.4 minimum damage which means that at the longer range shooting, you're still gonna need to hit somebody six to seven times to take them out. And that's just something that really deters me from using carbines at those extreme ranges. I try and use them for medium range exclusively. Close quarters can be fun if you have a nice high rate of fire one, but this uh, certainly isn't a high rate of fire weapon. 650 rounds per minute means that you're gonna have to take advantage of whatever things this gun has to offer. 650 rounds per minute, you're gonna get out damaged by pretty much everything on the battlefield, so you wanna be shooting first. If uh, you have a hip fire situation, then just use that. Don't even take the time to aim down sights because you're gonna need any little millisecond you can of damaging your opponent before they start damaging you. Now, if you've been watching my YouTube videos for a while, you'll notice that when I do a review of a weapon that I'm not crazy about or I don't like, I generally post 
a decent scoreboard with the gun. The point of this is to actually show that I can do well with the weapon, that I'm not failing miserably with the gun necessarily, but that even though I'm able to do well with the gun, I recognize that it's not very good. And there's certain play styles that you can adopt that will allow you to really just kind of get the jump on your opponent so it doesn't really matter what kind of gun you're using, you can still do well, but you can sort of recognize the limitations of the weapon at the same time. You'll notice a lot of my gameplay here, a lot of uh, my kill streaks and times that I'm doing well, I'm engaging opponents that aren't even shooting back on me. They're so surprised at uh, where my location is or they're not even aware of my location. So, so many of the firefights that I get into when I'm playing Battlefield are ones where my opponents are not aware of me, they're not shooting back. And in that situation, most guns can handle themselves pretty well. As long as you start firing at your opponent when you're within a range that basically is well suited to the weapon that you choose. If I have a shotgun, I'm not gonna start shooting at somebody that is 100 meters away. I'm gonna try and get in a lot closer before I give away my position by firing at them. And although you will see me engage people at longer ranges with this weapon, I'm mostly just testing it to see if I can actually drop people at longer ranges. Most of my kills are medium range with this gun. And in general, regardless of which weapon you're using, you definitely wanna think about when you wanna open fire. Some people just shoot at everything that they see, whatever is spotted, whatever they see on the mini map they just make a beeline for. I recommend not giving away your position until you feel like you can get a confirmed kill. Because as soon as you're on that mini map, so many players just play off the mini map, they come towards anything that's spotted, and it lowers your life expectancy to shoot your weapon pops you up there, unless you're using a suppressor, of course, but uh, supposing that we're not using suppressors for this example, then hold your fire until you feel like you've got a confirmed kill or you feel like you can take out any threats that are around you. Now back to the actual Type 95B1. It's not hard to see why this is one of the least popular carbines out there. It's tied with the G36C for lowest rate of fire, except it actually has more recoil than the G36C. It has a longer reload than the G36C. Uh, it has worse aiming down sight accuracy. In fact, the only benefit it really has over the G36C is the improved hipfire accuracy, which certainly isn't something to be taken lightly, but overall having slightly better hipfire accuracy and then getting worse in like four other categories to a gun that's already, in my opinion, uh, a fairly bad gun. <laughs> is uh, there's just not a lot going for the Type 95B1. It is a bad gun overall. Uh, I think DICE needs to do a few things to really buff this gun up and make it um, more interesting. It doesn't have to be a great gun, but certainly a few bumps in different stats like perhaps even further improving the hipfire accuracy, making the reload not so crappy, making the aiming down sight accuracy good. Um, there's a lot of different things that could be done with this weapon to make it more interesting and pop up on the battlefield a little bit more frequently because honestly, how many times are you guys getting killed by the Type 95B1? I rarely see this thing in the kill feed and there's good reason for it. It's certainly a gun that you can do well with. Uh, I was able to do well with it, but you just have to know the limitations of it. You have to be wary of that really long, short reload time and the even longer long reload time, which is just frightening, When especially when you get into close quarters, the reload on this thing is just gonna put you in a very dangerous situation. So make sure you got a good sidearm for finishing off stragglers and uh, stay at medium range distances whenever possible. Going too far away is gonna make your kills take way too long. Getting in too close is gonna put you in a very risky situation because you're gonna have to rely on your hip fire to try and win firefights because the response time of your opponent is essentially going to be the make or break situation since this has such a low damage output. Overall guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Try out the Type 95B1, see what you think of it for yourself. Hopefully DICE will patch this gun in the near future and maybe we have something new to say about it. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.